Hello, good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever in the world that you are. My name is Mike Goodicker, and this is the Social Network Shaman Podcast. So today we're going to be talking about a topic that I basically call navigating the gray area or the ethical issues within social media. As we all know, social media has become integral to our lives. It has revolutionized the way we communicate, we connect, and share information. Um, but with great power comes great responsibility, and social media is no exception. In recent years, ethical issues with social media have come to the forefront, and it has become increasingly important to understand the implications of social media use. So today we're going to talk about or explore some of the ethical issues surrounding social media and to form a simple guide on how to navigate that gray area. So let's start off with uh, the importance of um, ethical social media practices. The rise of social media has brought about many benefits, including the ability to connect with people worldwide and the ease of sharing information. Now, on one hand, uh, social networks help us to share information, but there is a few components in there that we need to be very careful of. And there's different research out there from MIT and other organizations that basically state that on social media platforms, the fact that we share information actually outweighs or turns off a function in the brain that is responsible for us um, or to help us to detect information that is false, misleading, uh, or fake. So we need to be careful when we talk about ethical social media practices and why using social media ethically is so darn important. So, but the importance of ethical social media practices um, is also focused on creating a new set of ethical um, or to navigate a set of ethical challenges. So the importance of ethical social media practices um, can't really be overstated because of these challenges. Social media can influence, for instance, opinions, it shapes public perception, it impacts elections, it also forms beliefs and the systems of beliefs that we carry with us that impact how we process information that we read or that comes in front of us. Now, therefore, it is very important and we must use social media in an ethical and responsible manner. Now, saying this on one hand is important, but the issues that we have are including that all social media outlets, regardless of which ones they are, they don't satisfy their responsibilities of vetting and getting rid of fake and false information, regardless of whether it's left, right, center, extreme this, extreme that. Um, it doesn't really do the job that it's supposed to. And part of the reason for that is we as humans are notoriously fantastic at creating new technology. We're really bad at using that technology without our egos getting into the way or greed um, or things um, like, for instance, if you do one thing, um, you need to outweigh the pros and cons and to put checks and balances in place. Now, there's a reason for that. So if um, we as humans were perfect, we wouldn't need to have governing systems in banks. We wouldn't need to make sure that there's insurances to make sure that the money that we put in these bank accounts is insured um, and a whole bunch of other things. So we're great at developing market words and technologies. We're not so great at uh, creating the rules and regulations around that new technology to protect us, our cultures and our ways of life. So there are ethical implications with uh, the use of social media. And um, social media has many ethical implications, including privacy, um, cyberbullying, and online harassment. One of the most significant ethical implications of social media use is the dissemination of false information and fake information or propaganda. With the rise of this fake news and misinformation, it's become increasingly difficult to discern what is true and what is false. And this has serious consequences because false information leads to misunderstandings, misperceptions, and even harm. 
Um, and there's different examples of people that spiral down depression toward the point where they see no other alternative but to uh, take the final and last step in that depression, which is departing from us, unfortunately. And that's not cool. Um, it's also not acceptable. So what are some of the examples of unethical social media practices? Um, unethical social media practices are all to standard. One example is, for instance, the use of bots uh, to manipulate public opinion, but also to attack. So bots are automated accounts that are programmed to like, to share, or to comment on social media posts of people that they're following. Um, they can be used to inflate a post's popularity artificially or to create a false sense of consensus. So in this instance, um, someone posts something that is derogatory and it's fake or false. These bots from an interest group or a nation state or whoever that threat actor is, they will push up these posts even though it's fake and false information because their agenda is to push this specific narrative. Now, what is the reason for them pushing the narrative? One of the reasons why they push narratives is because it's for their politics or for their goals. But um, another option is, and this is what nobody really thinks about, is these bots, they are targeting left and right based um, opinions that are on both extremes of the spectrums. And they're doing this because destabilization is one of the perfect ways for a nation state to attack another nation state without wasting any personal lives, without firing a shot, and using the infrastructure of social media against us. So it subverts the fact that social networks are greedy and they want to make as much money as possible. Two, that we are the subject, they're selling everything to us, so they do everything in their power to create apps that keep us focused and chained or imprisoned by their stupid platforms so that we do nothing else but look at these platforms. They then inoculate different posts and push them up. They create anxiety and fear and these emotional responses. We stay on there even longer. They make even more money off of us. But then at the point where we finally re um, release ourselves from this prison, we are left in a very hypersensitive, um, aggravated, angry, um, anxious, and fearful state. Not cool. Really not cool. Another example is the creation of fake accounts to harass or bully individuals online. This is another instance where these things directly lead to people taking a extreme decision to basically end everything or to basically move themselves out of their life in a very extreme way, which is also not cool. So you could equate this to while it's not being the person who is um, handling a weapon or some type of device that leads to the demise of another person or living human being, it does exactly the same thing electronically. So from an ethical standpoint, are they just as uh, guilty as the person that uh, basically would use another device to, to the demise of a living being or not? I would personally say yes because they are directly conscious of the decision that they're making. They are directly conscious that they are spreading false and fake information that leads to emotional responses. And they are directly responsible and making a conscious decision to use these fake accounts to harass and bully people to the state where they are so depressed that they have no other solution but to terminate everything that is creating that depression. Um, so, what are the impacts of unethical social media practices on individuals and society? Part of that we just talked about. The impact of unethical social media practices can be very far-reaching. It can lead to the spread of false information, the manipulation of political opinion, and the harassment and bullying of individuals. This can have severe consequences for both individuals and society as a whole, and we see this. It can lead to the erosion of trust in institutions, which we see, uh, the polarization of public opinion and people against each other, we see this too, and even the undermining of democracy throughout the world. We definitely see signs of this as well. So when you ask yourself what is really going on and who's behind it, think about these things. Also think about the fact that all social media platforms can control this, but they don't. This has nothing to do with freedom of speech. 
Freedom of speech does not mean that you can terminate someone uh, by attacking them to the point where they have no other solution but to terminate the things that are causing them stress and pain. That's not freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is saying your opinion. So don't come at me with a freedom of speech thing and if you start to monitor social networks, that's against freedom of speech, that's BS. So navigating this gray area, how do you make ethical decisions on social media? Navigating this gray area of ethical and social media use can be challenging. However, some guidelines can help. First and foremost, it's crucial to be aware of the ethical implications of social media use to begin with. This means we need to understand the potential impact of our actions and the actions of others on society as a whole. It also means being aware of the potential biases and limitations of the information that we encounter on social media. So I said again, there are studies out there from MIT and other universities that are trying to focus in on why fake and false news spread so quickly. And more than 48 to 50 percent of the information that is out there that people know is false still gets uh, shared because that function in our brain that's responsible for social interaction outweighs that function in our brain that says, hang on a minute, this stuff is BS, this is not true, I'm not going to share this. So social networks are programming us to react without logic thinking. And that's kind of scary. Again, this is something that all social network platforms can control. They decide not to, for whatever reason. So what's the role of social media companies in these ethical practices? Excuse me. <laughs> social media companies have a significant role to play in promoting ethical practices. They can do this by developing and enforcing ethical codes and guidelines for social media use, which can include policies on the use of bots or not using bots, the creation of fake accounts and deleting them, and not disseminating um, false and fake information on their platforms. Social media companies can also work to promote digital literacy as to how do we start to critically think about things and how can we help users on these platforms navigate what is a very complex landscape of social media. So again, social media companies are responsible for ethical practices on their platforms that they own and they make money off of. So the question becomes, when is it more important to not only focus on advertising money and actually not let the entire world burn because of all the fake and false information of uh, interest groups, nation states, hate groups, etc., that are only pouring millions of dollars onto these social network platforms throughout the world to spread their dogma, their propaganda, their fake and false news. Um, because at the end of the day, um, we can all have the opinions that we want. Um, I'm not saying that's not something we should have, but it's completely different when you have an online platform that basically just causes through fake and false propaganda and information because of greed, nothing else, that false information is sent out throughout the entire world. It creates and spirals into an effect of always constantly being emotional, being in a hate state, being anxious and having fear, and people really terminating uh, what they see as no other option to the causes of those pain. Um, they are directly responsible for the people that we lose due to these extreme decisions. Um, and you can't sugarcoat this any other way. It is what it is. Um, and it means that it has to change. So either there's an option where social media companies are directly held responsible for people that terminate uh, based on these types of issues, or um, there are a set of laws that basically protect everyone, regardless of what spectrum you're on. This is not a political discussion. This is a human discussion. This is a species discussion. This is a discussion on freedoms. We should have the freedom to state our opinions with information that is true and that is not fake and false and does not have the target of creating an emotional reaction that spirals out of control and destabilizes the entire world. I don't know how that could be a logical decision to make for any company. Um, making money is good, but it's not being complete normal business 
when the entire world is going to burn in the aftermath of you making millions of dollars on stuff that you don't check and verify is true or not, or terminate fake accounts or botnets that are basically spreading artificially uh, and disseminating and creating artificial situations of hate, uh, fear, and uncertainty and doubt, um, when in fact that should be illegal. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of laws against doing that in persona. Curiously enough, there's not a lot of laws or there are no laws that basically protect us against that online. And that needs to change. And it's not going to stifle um, basically freedom of speech because freedom of speech is not freedom to attack anyone for uh, whatever reason you want to. That's not freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is saying what you believe to, and hold is true and for you to have your beliefs and to be accepted for those beliefs without um, any type of um, negative um, reactions to that. But um, if you are one, if you think one way and someone thinks another way and both of you are getting attacked for your opinions, that's, there's no freedom of speech. So the very thing that these bots are saying you should say, freedom of speech, that's the very thing that you no longer have at this point in time because these platforms aren't really interested in freedom of speech. They're not really interested in us as people. They're only interested in generating revenue and that has to change somehow because it's burning up the entire world, in my opinion. And we can see this through all these different things that are happening. So how do we fix this? Um, there's a few different ways. On the personal level, I talk a lot about um, getting away from social media apps, not because completely going cold turkey, but we need to separate ourselves from a system that is completely emotional and creates hate, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So hiking, walking, um, talking to people, going out to a cafe, drinking coffee, do whatever, go out to lunch, go fishing, you know, hike up a mountain, um, do some meditation, do Tai Chi or Qigong, um, do, you know, journeying, that kind of stuff. There's a whole bunch of different things that we can do to reconnect with the humanity of us, that we're human beings, we're living awarenesses. We're not just some, um, some electronic number and profile on a social media platform living in a virtual world. We live in this world, this world that we can touch, the world that's around us. Um, for instance, if we pollute things uh, and we drink that polluted stuff that we, we eventually die. Or um, if we have, you know, if all the ice and all uh, the North and the South Pole melt, the oceans will rise and a lot of places will get flooded or we have more extreme weather. These are things we can measure this, see if it makes sense. It's not a political decision. It's not a socialist or republicanist or whateverist type of decision. These are things that are real that we can measure and see in front of our eyes, whether we want to recognize that or not. The electronic world and social networks aren't the real world. They're a manufactured reality that can be changed anytime and be can filter, that can be filtered and manipulated by each one of the platform owners. So if we're living in a situation where everything is full of hate, full of fear, guess what? You just turn a dial and you can change it. And it's not you that makes that decision. It's the platform owner that makes that decision. Some food for thought. So I'm calling out all of you um, social network companies to finally satisfy your responsibility towards the entire world and to start getting your act together. Get your stuff together and do your work. If you want to um, stand by the fact that you're just interested in making money, be honest about it. Don't lie and don't beat around the bush. But then you're also responsible for the situations when people terminate themselves based on what you allow on your platform. That's a natural um, reaction to the decision that you make. So ethical codes and guidelines on social media usage. Recently, there's been growing recognition for the need of ethical codes, who would have thought, and guidelines for social media use. Many organizations and professional associations have developed some codes of conduct that guide ethical social media practices. These codes can include guidelines on privacy, authenticity, and transparency, things we don't see right now. 
They can also guide handling ethical dilemmas that may arise during social media use. So what's the future of, uh, of ethical social media? The future of ethical social media at this point is uncertain. However, some trends are worth noting. One is the growing importance of digital literacy and critical thinking skills for everyone. As social media continues to evolve, it will become increasingly important for users to be able to navigate the complex landscape of information and misinformation and propaganda. Another trend is the growing recognition of the need for ethical guidelines and codes of conduct. As more organizations and professional associations develop their codes, we will likely see more widespread adoption of ethical social media practices. So uh, in conclusion, the importance of responsible social media use is there. Social media has brought about many benefits, but it has created a new set of ethical challenges that threaten us as a species throughout the entire world. We must use social media ethically and responsibly, and we must be aware of the potential impact of our actions on others and society as a whole, even the planet as a whole. This means being aware of the ethical implications of social media use and the following ethical codes, uh, the following of these ethical codes and guidelines for social media use. By doing so, we can help to promote more ethical and responsible use of social media and help to create a better future for all. And at the end of the day, isn't that a worthwhile goal? That we can use social media in a way where we're not attacked for our use, which is the very thing that people are accusing that social media does. Um, yeah, maybe some food for thought. Let me know your, your view. Let me know your thoughts. And I will talk to you online soon. Okay.